New list of the most overpaid players of all time. Number three, Clay Thompson. Only better than Gordon Hayward and John Wall. Who but Clay wants to be number one on that list? Woj reported Clay has an expectation that he would be rewarded with a max level contract extension. Maybe the max from 1991. Am I right? But the Warriors owner was just asked about this, and it's not pretty. So does that mean that Clay will be on another team soon, or will he come to his senses and take a pay cut? You know, everyone thinks of Clay as like this humble dude who just is on his boat with his dog. Of course he'll take a pay cut, he's chill. But no, when Clay came back from injury, he feels like a different person. He now has a chip on his shoulder we have never seen. Clay started last season chucking shots and hurting the team. 35% from the field his first six games. The team literally had an intervention to say, stop doing this. Then he finally settled down. It's like Clay is trying to prove that he is the same player as before but he's not. Then Devin Booker talked trash to Clay, telling him he's not great anymore. So Clay threw his four rings into Booker's face. That is not Clay Thompson. I'm sorry, but that's what an insecure person does, not the Clay Thompson that we know. So will this new Clay Thompson take a pay cut? I'm not so sure. And this goes all the way back to the NBA top 75 team. Clay was left off that list despite being key to an all-time dynasty. He said, woke up this AM, still pissed about this stupid ass list. I can't wait to hoop again, sick of the disrespect. Winning isn't everything to some people like it is to me, I guess, which is a great point. The reason Clay is number three on the most overpaid list is weird. The author says, even in 2015-16, arguably his best season ever, part of 73 and nine Warriors squad, Thompson was barely a top 50 player according to the analytics. The analytics, I'm sorry, but that is proof that stats are BS half the time. You can make them say whatever you want. Of course, Clay Thompson, Thompson was a top 50 NBA player. They don't win three rings in four years without him. Definitely don't win that fourth ring after the injuries. But who is Klay Thompson now when he's about to get paid? Is he still top 50? Well, after that rough start to start last year, he bounced back shooting 43% from deep in November, including 41 points against the Rocket. Then when Steph got injured, Klay stepped up, averaged 23 points a night, 54 on New Year's Day against the Hawks. But Klay's real value is in the playoffs. What that overpaid list doesn't realize is his impact on winning chips. So Clay averaged 21 points the first six games against the Kings, but in game seven, he collapsed, almost bricked them out of the playoffs, shooting 21%. Steph Curry bailed him out with 50 points, but okay, that's just one game seven. Against the Lakers, Clay was amazing games one and two, 30 points to tie the series, but the last four games, were a disaster. 11 points a night on 25% shooting. This version of Clay is inconsistent who does not deserve a max contract. He wants to get paid for who he used to be, but the Warriors already did that. In the 2019 finals, Clay went down holding his knee with a torn ACL. That combined with KD's injury and the Raptors won the chip. But Clay was up for a new contract. So despite the injury, he got a max deal, knowing he'd be out a full year. Then he tore his Achilles the next season. So they paid Clay 68 million for zero games. I'm sorry but take the pay cut, Clay. They already took care of you. So Clay will be a free agent next offseason, and he can sign with any other team. But the owner, Joe Lacob, said, we'll see if we can put something together that allows Clay to be here for a long time, which we clearly would like him to be. And I think there is no way he leaves the Warriors. Clay's agent leaked to Woj that he expects a max contract. That's just starting negotiation. He'll start there at max, but then work his way down to something more reasonable. That's exactly, if you remember, what happened with Draymond. There were rumors he expected a max contract, then they landed at a lesser number. If Clay does feel disrespectful, respected by a pay cut, that won't last for long. Yes, new Clay might have a chip on his shoulder, but underneath, he's still the same old person.
Listen to what he said about that trash talk to Devin Booker. Stuff doesn't age well, and that didn't age well for yeah. me. Like, I don't need to be flexing four rings, bro. Like, everybody know that. That's on Wikipedia. Like, I just, my game wasn't where it was at. And we all get insecure at times. Yeah. I'm not man enough to admit that. I'm man enough to admit that we all have our moments of weakness. So I'm not really proud of that one. Because I see Devin Booker, and I should be like, man, I should be proud of this young man. Yeah. Like, the work he's put in, he survived a tough regime in Phoenix where everyone's getting traded. He's playing for a new coach every year, but yeah. now he's a franchise player because he just kept working. So I admire the guys who have work ethic like mm -hmm. that, you know? That is the clay that we all love. But you know the biggest reason he'll take a pay cut to stay? He could never leave Steph Curry. When Clay was at his lowest moment, Steph was there. When Clay describes what his teammates meant to him during his injury, it gets emotional. Like I would cry yeah. like a baby on the yeah, bench. Yeah. Like, yeah, you know, like that was hard for me when I had to walk when you know, we're, our guys are going through the season. That's why I'm so grateful for Andre, Steph, and Draymond because I'm sitting there watching, like, and I'm hearing the crowd. I'm just like, I can't believe this happened to me again. And I couldn't shake that from my head. And Steph came over and was like, you're going to play so much basketball after this. Don't I couldn't see that at the time. I was like, I just kept saying, like, my career wasn't supposed to go like this. This is bullshit. This isn't fair. I was feeling sorry for myself. Mm -hmm. but uh, I, So I'm grateful for those guys. They didn't have to do that. And they, they uh, showed me a lot of love that day. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Now imagine Clay suddenly becoming cold-hearted over money? No, as long as the contract isn't actually insulting, he will remain a warrior. But what happens next? We all know that Golden State is chasing ring number five. It's a dominant storyline next year. Last season, they struggled so bad, it ended in a sixth seed looking nothing like a contender. But something happened this offseason that could change that. After they lock in Clay, the big three of Steph, Clay, and Draymond will be Warriors for life. But a new dub is already near the end. Chris Paul. Trading 24-year-old Jordan Poole for 38-year-old CP3 is a huge sign they are all in for this year. They are no longer planning for the future. They will maximize Steph Curry's prime. Against the Kings, Steph became just the third player over 35 years old to average 30 in a playoff series. Michael Jordan, Reggie Miller, and Steph Curry. He is still an MVP candidate, so they will have a chance the problem is not having a legit number two. Last year with defenses keyed on Steph, someone else needed to rise up. But against the Lakers, Clay, Jordan Poole, and Wiggins failed. So does Chris Paul fix that? No, but he does add another playmaker to worry about so that Steph can affect the game even more. We'll see if they can have a better regular season with good defense to get a higher seed but I fully expect all this clay drama to be over soon. But the wild card would be trading for Giannis Antetokounmpo. Giannis, again, threatened to leave the Bucs if they don't compete for a championship. So I looked at which teams can realistically get him. Check it out.